Well, hello. In this video, we're going to be finally looking at the fabled Arduino Uno. And I have behind me some enormous pieces of wood. No, they're actually regular sized pieces of wood, but we've got a magnifying camera so that we can look at this in detail. So to start with the Arduino Uno, this one in particular is made by a company called Elegoo who are out of Shenzhen, China. Uh, this is the, Ar the, it doesn't say Arduino, it says Elegoo Uno because they haven't licensed the name Arduino, but it is the same thing. It's just a generic version. R3 refers to revision three and Uno is the Italian word for the number one because this was the first Arduino that was mass produced. Um, so uh, what I want to do is investigate a bunch of different aspects of this board. And the way we're gonna do it to begin with is I like to get a piece of paper, a piece of white paper, put the board down on the paper and make a trace of it using a pencil or a pen. Something like this does not have to be especially beautiful, but once you've done that, then you can refer to uh, the different parts of the board without needing to have the physical board with you. Now, if you do not have a physical board, you might wanna print out a picture of these. There's plenty of pictures of Arduino Unos on the internet. It might not look precisely like this, but the pins will be in the same place as each other. Um, on any UNO board. So first of all, by the way, you might see that I'm handling the board mostly from the sides. That is because the kind of safer way to hold the board broadly is from the edges. You can see some exposed metal here and here and here. And if you flip it over a lot more exposed metal, and in, in theory, if you were to touch this metal with a high voltage, you would harm something on the Arduino. Generally, it's a pretty hardy board. You don't need to worry a whole lot about that. But if you wanna hold it safely, I recommend holding it from the edges. And by the way, the board is pretty tough. You can drop it like that. You can mistreat it a little bit physically. It'll be okay. So you don't need to be very, very gentle with it. So let's look at some of the things that are on this board. So I'm just gonna actually make some annotations. For instance, right here, I'm gonna hover my pencil and draw a little shape. I'm gonna do this for some various shapes on the board because I'm interested in uh, having a decent map of some of the features of the board so we can talk about them. You don't need to do this with a lot of precision. It's like really okay to have just a vague outline of where things are just so you can refer to them later. Though if you want to be very careful about it, certainly be my guest. Few more things, little rectangles here and here and there. And that should be just about enough for now. So what I'm gonna do is push the board off to the side and just look at some of these things I've got here and label them. The first thing that we're gonna label are these two big cans. Now you'll notice that they are labeled CS4725V, which is a pretty opaque label if you are new to electronics. Um, what these are, I'm just gonna write this label up here. These are two capacitors. Oh my gosh, capacitors. And there's two of them. They're two of the same thing, as you can tell by reading their labels. Um, these are electrical devices, which we cannot directly control. So a lot of the aspects of the Arduino that are valuable to us, we're able to program the Arduino, tell it to do this, do that, and control aspects of the electronics. The capacitors are what are called passive components. We can't control them at all. They just sit there on the board and they help perform some electrical function. In this case, these capacitors perform the electrical function of smoothing out bumps in the incoming electricity to power the board. So I just point them out as a topic of interest, not because we're going to be interacting directly with them. The next thing I want to point out is this big blocky thing here. And the big clue, uh, if we were curious, what is this thing? Well, let's, it's got a label on it. So let's look at the label. I'm going to get a little closer to the camera so we can read the label. What it says in the upper left here is Atmel, A-T-M-E-L. That is the name of the company that built this thing, this chip. 
Then it says, mine says 1635. Yours probably says something else. That's actually a date code saying when the chip was produced. It was not produced in 1935, in the 16th month of 1935 or something. The date code would be, if we were to read the data sheet, we could know what the date code means. I don't know when this one was produced. But the thing that matters to us, finally, it's the name of this chip. It's AT Mega 328P-PU. The, some of the paint on the two on, on mine has worn off. The AT Mega 328P or PU or whatever, there's a few different versions of it, is the brains of the Arduino. So I'm just going to label it brains of Arduino for short. Um, if you are uh, wanting to find out more information about it, you can just do a web search for that, that uh, string, that name of the chip, and you'll find out a whole lot of things about it. But what we care about is that basically when we program the Arduino, when we write instructions for it, those instructions are going to end up going to this thing, this chip. It's going to remember the instructions we write, and for the most part, it's going to execute the instructions we write. It's going to actually send electricity out. It's going to read electricity coming in. It's going to be doing almost all of the work. And essentially, the rest of the chip here, the rest of the stuff that we see, is supporting and connected to this chip. It is, by the way, possible to remove this chip. You could pull it out, and then you'd have an Arduino board that would do very, very little. It would maybe light up if you plugged it into power, like the power light would go on but it wouldn't do a whole lot else. So uh, also, if this, if, if this board were too big for you, if you wanted to do some very, very small Arduino project, I told you this thing is the brains. Could you remove the brain and operate that on its own? Yes, you could. You can actually remove this chip and it will basically be an Arduino in a sense on its own. However, it'll be a little bit harder to work with and it, we will have fewer of the advantages that all of the surrounding things on this chip give us. In the next video, we're going to talk with some more detail about other aspects of the board.